Hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. And we welcome Kenzie to the studio. Woo! Woo! Uh, <laughs> by the way, today's interview is being delivered to you by GoPuff. Use the code Zach10 when you're checking out to save $10 off your first two orders. Do you GoPuff at all? Have you ever GoPuffed? No? I don't think so. Oh, it's going to change your life. <laughs> like, sorry. <laughs> no, sister, like a convenience store, but like oh. better. Oh, like, sick. And they get things to you instantly, whatever you need. Like, uh, really, like whatever you need, they have it. Thousands oh. of items. It's there. I need to do that then. Uh, the last time you were on the show, I made an ass out of myself. Do you remember? <laughs> no, I don't think you made an do ass out of yourself. Do you remember instantly I called you by the wrong name? You did, actually. Can I do we, remember that. Can we Can we play that right here? Oh, God. That still haunts everyone to this day. Oh, my God. It's one of the worst <laughs> moments of my life. Terrible. I mean, not like, you know, it just went like it lived on the internet in a really real, real way. I'm so sorry about that. You know, it's okay. It happens a lot. So, I, so much. See, that's why it makes me hate it even more because- <laughs> There is something, and this is God's truth, and I've dealt with it with my own sister. Like, there is like an identity thing, though, that exists when you spend so much time with another person from the very beginning. Totally. And you just, by the fact that you guys, me and my sister, you and your sister, are siblings, you are walking a similar path. Mm -hmm. And it is, identity matters more than anything. Totally. Right? Yeah. And carving out your own identity and who you are is so vital. And I don't know, that's like such a fucking massive part of life and yeah. establishing you as a person outside of art and like everything else that's, you know, thrown your way. Totally. Um, But music definitely has a, a, a hand in helping you define who you are though, right? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I think, I think my sister and I doing separate things it has definitely helped me with my identity I guess you could say because we also both started doing the same thing um so now it's nice that we get to kind of do separate things but also come together sometimes and like actually be friends as well <laughs> well because like that separation and that lack of like work fog makes the, the moments that you're together that much brighter and more impactful um music today though means something different than what it meant to you when you were on the couch before of course. Because you were on the couch years ago, right? Years ago. Dan yeah. is the historian. I think the year is like 2019 or something. I was a baby. Yeah, literally. And that was like a whole... Uh, now you... Were you writing back then? Whoa. What? <laughs> you look so young. I was a... Yeah, I was a baby. It was 2017. Wow! July 6th, 2017. Whoa. Damn. We were talking about monsters, a.k.a. Oh my haters. gosh, I'm like, don't even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like my music has definitely changed a lot since back then because now I'm writing my own stuff and I am part of the entire creative process. And it's just, I just love music so much that it just like feels normal now. I feel like back then it felt like a job and I felt like I, I needed something to do, but... I've definitely found my sound and it just, it just feels right. What was pushing that? Like the need to have a job, to have something to do, especially when you were so young. Mm -hmm. I think because when I was on the show, when I was younger, I was put into music on yeah. the show. And so I felt like I needed to carry that out because I wasn't dancing anymore. I get it. Um, but I took a step back from music and it's so nice coming back to it and actually having a passion for it and, and being like, this is actually what I want to do. Leaving music allowed it to kind of find you again. Or totally. Reestablish and have a whole new relationship. Absolutely. So do you remember getting back into the studio after taking a break and leaving behind records like that one mm -hmm. that we discussed in 2017? Yeah, of course. What was it like getting back into the studio? I mean, it's amazing. I get to work with such cool people. I'm really big on women empowerment. I'm working with a lot of women fe like female producers female writers it's just like just feels full circle it just feels really amazing so do you go in with ideas to the studio do you go in blank slate like what how do you operate i mean it it honestly depends on the day for me um sometimes i go in with an idea sometimes i go in with like a reference or just a word but most of the time i feel like it's just over conversations that i have with the people that i'm working with or they ask me about my day or just random shit one of the records that's blowing up right now is derived not from your own life, but from somebody else's, right? Somebody who got broken up with over Christmas? degrees, yes. That's a great record. Thank you. <laughs> Can you describe what it was like talking with your friend and hearing that story for the first time? And like, at what point in her telling you what she went through, do you realize that this is, this is a record? 
I mean, well, it obviously sucks. The whole situation is terrible. Being broken up with is like the worst thing in the world. Um, but I felt like, you know, I could relate to it a little bit because I have been in relationships and a breakup is absolutely terrible and seeing my friends go through it as well. Um, so it was kind of, it was kind of cool kind of writing from someone else's perspective and, and putting myself in that as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, I just knew it would be a really good song, even if it didn't do well. I just like loved the concept. What does it come easy to you being empathetic and putting yourself in somebody else's shoes? Uh, I think, yeah, I think when they're close to me, I think when they're my friend, I feel vulnerable and I, I, I care about my friends a lot. And so I think it was easy for me. Yeah. What is it like telling your friend that you're going to make a song out of it? <laughs> I mean, sometimes they're happy. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> but I feel like, I feel like my friends love when I write songs about them. Do they? Yeah. I mean, if it's a good one, obviously. Do you have I to get permission? No. I mean, no. <laughs> <sighs> That's interesting. You know, you tell your friends something in confidence and then it turns into a record, but there's no, like, there's no real connection to them. They don't know. Totally. Hmm. Has a breakup ever ruined anything for you? Breakup ruined anything for me? Has a breakup oh. ever ruined anything for you? I mean, songs, places you go to, mm -hmm. like, literally, I feel like anything. Breakups suck. Yeah, my brother just dumped his girlfriend. Probably shouldn't have said that. Shit. Just happened like two days ago. Sorry. Hopefully to your watch. brother. Hopefully they don't watch this. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, my brother just dumped his girlfriend. So you know what? I'm going to send her this song tonight. Right. He you was? absolutely should. <laughs> I should not have said that. <laughs> I have so many questions. Why'd my they mom's going to kill me. Why'd they break up? <laughs> you know, man, sometimes things don't work out. They were together for a, uh, uh, like a couple of years, right? <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Damn. <laughs> and it's so ironic because Dan just entered a relationship. Oh, congrats. He now has a girlfriend. So wow. his brother leaves love mm. while Dan enters love. Good for you. Thank you. Sorry to your brother. You know what? Wow. That's interesting, right? Things happen. Things, things happen. You look like you're about to cry. I am. I should not have, I should not have said that. Did somebody cheat on somebody? No. I don't. I just Things fizzle out. You know what I mean? Uh, totally. Did they lose attraction to one another? <laughs> you're, listen, you're asking too many questions. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> That's scary, man. <laughs> That's terrible. Damn. But Love is so hard. You're in a relationship. Yeah, you're I am in a relationship. We know his name. Ta Dakota. Dakota. Good name. You know, he saw that in he, our last interview and he was like, damn, he said my name wrong. Oh, damn. We called him Taco Da, I think. Mm -hmm. oh, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Taco Da? Yeah, you Shut did. Shut the fuck up. You did. Oh, I need help. I said that? Yeah. yeah Roll the tape. Roll the tape. Butchering Another names, tape. Getting sisters wrong. <laughs> what? God. It's okay. Is it though? It's fine. No, we'll I, forget about it. This is like a new, a we're, new day. We're yeah, day one. <laughs> we're in a new era. New era. <laughs> so what but do you take anything with you from the last music you put out in terms of like what you've learned that you actually do apply when making stuff today? I think yeah. I mean, I think with music I've been really experimenting and like kind of stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, which I think I've learned throughout this whole process uh, is just to like do what you think is good, but also try new things because you never know how it's going to turn out. How many songs do you have done right now that could touch people's ears? I have millions of songs at this point. Really? Millions of songs. I can't even name all of them. <laughs> but are they songs you like? Love. Yes. Okay. There's, well, there's multiple, there's so many songs that I love and there's so many songs that I don't like. You never know. So how are you documenting your own inspiration? Um, that's a hard question. Do you have like notes? Like, what do you, how do you keep track of it? I mean, notes. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just, I just make music. <laughs> so I'm like trying to like, because you have two great songs back to back, Thank right? Thank you. Because we have a hundred degrees mm -hmm. and then, uh, correct. It's paper, right? That's mm -hmm. it. Really another great record. Thank you. So are we leading up to something, an album? Sometime soon. I'm coming out with a bunch more singles first and then album later on. Okay. Well, is there, I mean, will those singles that come out make up that album that's coming? Yeah. Got totally. it. Are you trying to tell a story? Of course. I think I'm just trying to, you know, show people who I am because I feel like they've only seen me on TV and they don't really know who I am, my story, my personality. So 
it's nice to do it through music as well. So what does paper tell the world about you? What do we learn about you from paper? I mean, I think that I can be vulnerable and that I can be emotional and be a normal person. I mean, yeah, duh. (laughs) I mean, you're a normal person. Well, do you think people will always, or some people will always see you as like this little girl on TV? Totally. Totally. I still, people still come up to me and they're like, wait, you're not 10? (laughs) I'm like, no. People grow up. (laughs) How do you receive that? Do you think that's like... uh, I mean, I don't... I used to hate it, but I mean, I still remember where I came from and I'm still so, you know, happy with how everything turned out. And if that didn't happen, then I wouldn't be here. So I I definitely like... I have a love for my younger self. (laughs) Yeah. You've also been through a lot that makes up the inspiration that, that give you songs today. Totally. So... Is it hard to be vulnerable? No, I don't think so. I think because I've been in the public eye and I've been talking to my fans for years that it just feels normal. I feel like they know me better than most of my friends do. So, <laughs> Is that an interesting like thing to wrap your mind around or to come to terms with? Oh, no, it's so weird. It yeah. is weird. But I think it's awesome. It, 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 it is. It's fascinating. Yeah, right. Do you feel like your friends, in order to get to know you, need to tap into what you do in the public space, like post on social? For sure, I feel like, yeah. Wow. Oh. Didn't you just, you you came back to YouTube recently, right? I did. Yeah, well, first of all, why'd you take a break? And second, why'd you come back? Well, I mean, I, I did YouTube when I was younger, but I never actually, like, did it, did it. Like, uh-huh. I never was consistent. I would just make a video and post it for fun. But I feel like... I've always wanted to do YouTube and it just, I just want people to see what I do every day. Some people like love that. So are you going to document making music at all? Totally. Yeah. Who are you? Like, how are you setting up the rooms? Because if you have a bunch of songs that you already have done, are you working with the same people from song to song? Like, have you found a core? I mean, I found people that I love working with, but right now I'm kind of doing the like speed dating thing yeah. again, <laughs> like going around and meeting new people, um, which has been great. It's all been amazing people. But 100 Degrees to Paper, are those with the same producers and writers, or is it different people? Different people. Really? Mm Mm-hmm. Are you playing these records for Sia? I haven't in a while. Really? You didn't play her 100 Degrees before it came out? I didn't. She's one of the, I mean. She's busy. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. know, She's very busy. (laughs) She's like one of the greatest musicians, obviously, of all time. One of the greatest songwriters to ever exist. Oh, absolutely. You know, she's like always one of the greatest guests on our show just because of how genius she right. really is and i mean she's like never boring to talk to no. and she's just extraordinary and she does not release an album until every song is its own standalone hit single mm-hmm. and she'll sit on something for a long time because sometimes the longer you sit on something the more timeless it weirdly becomes right, right. like it and when it comes out and it skyrockets it proves that that ability to like be lasting totally um it, you don't play her stuff. Is that strategic or is this like, cause she's family at this point too. Yeah, totally. You know? Yeah. Um, well I, I have definitely played her a bunch of my songs and she gives me great feedback. I was actually using her studio in her house for like a very long time, Sick. which was awesome. And I, it was so funny. Like when people would come over, I would not tell them where they were and they were like, God, this house is ginormous. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, it's my friend's house. <laughs> like, I would never tell them <laughs> whose house it was. Um, but yeah, I've definitely, I've played her a lot of my music and she still texts me to this day about them. So it's like, great. Is that like one of the, we- like, when you look back at your life, right? <laughs> it's been really wild. Yeah. Have you had moments where you come to terms with the fact that like, this has been a crazy ride from a very beginning and like, you've ended up somewhere that, I mean, one could dream, but like you could never really plan for the route that you've taken to get here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I always think it's crazy. Um, I mean, I never thought I would even be in this industry. I mean, I started when I was six years old and I like don't remember most from when I was younger. Um, But I'm so lucky, honestly. You've acquired like really good people in your zone. at times when you could have acquired like really dirty people, like probably trying to take advantage or whatever. And yeah, you've really acquired the right people. Yeah. Even to have somebody like Sia just in, just doesn't need to be present on a daily or a weekly or even a monthly, but just around. Of course. And just like, like a blessing. Totally. And having like a huge inspiration 
to me just like around is like great and i feel like it's more motivating as well because she is such like i mean an icon obviously creatively <laughs> motivating but also safe and i also like she cares about you guys like yeah. she came on our show and like was so kind and like really She's caring kind. and sweet and god really such a beautiful soul like, yeah she is the nicest person i know and it's really <laughs> something else yeah. I mean, you have eddie benjamin around you too i do does he ever give you music advice i mean he's like a genius always he gives me relationship advice he gives me regular advice he's like he knows everything he's a very smart kid and he he loves people around him it's awesome because he's like honestly i think the most talented person i've ever mm -hmm. seen in my life so. really eddie benjamin the weatherman the weatherman absolutely he Great. plays every instrument he's always singing i mean he went on tour with justin bieber like great fucking record that weatherman right? fucking so good he's the weatherman so do you get in the studio with him no why he's been wanting to for a very long time and i'm like you're very intimidating like mm. i don't i don't want to do it i are will one day but <laughs> and you guys are friends yeah of course he's like my brother so that's and so that makes like, it intimidating you know I think, everything. okay well obviously everything he's great but i also think it's really weird for me to mix my friends with my work yes. no nah, don't shit where you eat You've yeah kept, yeah do not do like it. i just i don't know my best friend also dylan makes music and i always think about it like oh if we were in a session together i feel like it'd be really weird mm -hmm. like it just doesn't make sense to me i you know what i agree with this don't do it as somebody who only exclusively takes 12 course dinners on the toilet mm. What? Don't do it. I shit where I eat all day. <laughs> oh, yeah, I combine love, pleasure and life and work and business <laughs> and marry me, but also work here and also. And I always say, Zach, don't do it. And you say, I'm going to do it. Right. And you regret it. Yeah, every mm. time. Don't. I'm telling you, uh, so smart. I won't do it. Those who can't do teach. So don't shit where you eat. Okay. Thank um, you for the advice. Yeah. You're talking about Dylan Canrique? Yes. She's such a great one, too. She's amazing. I have the I best people. I didn't know you were friends with She's uh, my best friend. Well, I knew that. I didn't, yeah, I didn't know Eddie Benjamin. Mm -hmm. She's dating her She's sister. Da he's dating oh, my sister. Jesus. Oh, yeah. like, How have you been? <laughs> I, I don't know. Old? Like, you know, like living a, living a life of a soon-to-be 30-year-old, you know? How old are you? Guess. Uh, 19. I was going to say 18. 18. Oh. God, you're so young. Damn. I know. <laughs> I feel really old. I, I understand that. <laughs> because you've been carrying a lot for a long time. <laughs> and it's been a lot. Do yeah. you ever think of, like, not doing it? I definitely, like, I think a few years ago, I, like, have definitely been like, ugh, I'm, I can't do it anymore. It's stressful. It comes with a lot of anxiety. And, like, I, I mean, obviously, there's so many people staring at you constantly. But, um, I mean... Why, why would I choose to go back home and be a nobody when, like, I just am having so much fun. I'm meeting amazing people. I'm doing what I love. And, I mean, just, like, achieving my dream. It's, like, great. But w w when it gets tough, do you ask why? Because, like, understanding why you choose to sacrifice to do this. Because you could find creative fulfillment in other areas. Totally. Right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think I ever ask why. I think I, I just... Sometimes I have to take like a step back because it is it is a lot and it's like it's it's work but at least i have fun working so <laughs> when did it become fun uh i think i think like this era mm -hmm. of music i think it just all became fun so who are you putting in the room with you you talk about you know having women in the studio who's mm -hmm. in there um there's this girl that i actually met two years ago on like zoom and she moved here and now she's this girl that I'm like, I need to spend the rest of my life with her. We create the most amazing music together. Her name is Lenny. She's an artist as well, but she, she just knows me so well that it's so nice having her in a room uh. and just having like a friend there, but also we just relate on so many levels. And I feel like that's why I love working with females because obviously men are great in the studio, uh. but I feel like girls just get girls. And it's just like, I could never talk about like a certain situation with a man than I could with a woman. Totally. I totally agree with that. Do, do, does she do 100 Degrees in paper? She did it 100 Degrees. She produced it and she wrote it as well. Sick. Mm -hmm. That's very special. It is. It's awesome. So how many songs do you do with her after that? M millions. <laughs> millions of songs. <laughs> I want to listen to them. 
You should. You better. <laughs> so do you have an album at least sketched out or roughly planned? Well, the thing with like music is it always changes. So I feel like we've had like a yeah, yeah. an album for a while, but I'm like making better songs and so one goes out and then, you know, it's music is always up in the air. <laughs> Did you set any goals before you went back in the studio to make this era or create this body work? I think honestly just to enjoy it. And not be too stressed out. And if the song is not amazing when it comes out, it's okay. You're going to make another great one. That's like a really cool place to get to. Thanks. <laughs> right? And yeah. special because it allows you to create in a stress-free, unencumbered environment or a situation that allows you to, I don't know, totally. put unneeded pressure on yourself. Yeah, there's no need. Yeah. At what point in your career were you happy with the music you were putting out? This point in my career <laughs> so we don't we don't love donuts i mean <laughs> why okay, what, what happened <laughs> everyone just kind of went like this. <laughs> no i just feel like i feel like the music <laughs> i feel like the music i was putting out a few years ago was just not me at all mm, like yeah. i just feel like i would never be like oh yeah let's write a pop song like that yeah like i a, like how you're going this little pop alternative yeah here. that's cool i feel like i just yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was so funny. Everyone started <laughs> laughing. God. I mean, listen, Donuts is not a terrible no, song. No, I mean, listen, it's great. I, don't, I, just, I mean, the name is kind of funny. It mm. is hilarious. It's all about, like, it's not actually about Donuts. It's but not they really made it seem like it's about Donuts. Right? Totally. Yeah. In the music video, yeah. Sure did. Um, Wait, what's it <laughs> thanks, about? Thanks, Dunkin' Donuts. Like, um, yeah, you'll explain. It's not my song. What am I, I mean, it's just, it's just about a boy. It's just... Yeah, it's about, like... Is the boy the donut? Zach, actually, it's, what, Zach, what do you think it's about? Yeah, I what? mean, I thought actual donuts, but now my head's going into a sexual area. It's that, like I don't like it here. No, 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 no. I Complete don't. opposite, actually. It's someone like you're doing donuts around oh. my street. Oh, that's really something. That's a reach. Right. Yeah. I didn't write it, so it's okay. But I do love the song. Got it. I just feel like now, since I'm writing my own music and... I'm telling my story and I'm being more vulnerable. It's just so beneath me now that I'm like, I don't even think about it. Uh -huh. Did you feel like you just weren't ready to tell your own story back then? Cause you just weren't, I mean, you're barely a full fledged human being now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it's hard to force somebody who's just figuring out life or barely living to just be vulnerable and share everything. It's true. Cause you're just figuring it all out yourself. Totally. Still are right. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I'm still so young. I'm like just, I just became an adult. Like I have to do adult things now and it's weird. That is weird. Right? It's, yeah. I mean, but also you've been an adult. Yeah. But I, I mean like taxes and. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, like that shit. I don't, I don't get, no. I don't understand. Taxes, that. you know, like grocery stores. Like, yeah. You know, grocery you shopping. I do live on my own. Damn. And it's weird. Yeah. Do you live with your boyfriend? No. Oh, damn. I'm not, I'm too young You're for 18. that. 18. No, that's right. God. I mean, like most people, I feel like move in here, m move in with their boyfriend. But I'm just like, I, I feel like I still need to live life first. I, yeah, fuck yes. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Got all the life to live. <laughs> yeah. How'd you and Taco Da meet? We're just going to call him that. <laughs> um, that's so embarrassing. It's No, it's fine. <laughs> um, I My sister found him on TikTok. <laughs> It's very embarrassing. No, I love that. No, it's like hilarious. But yeah, my sister sent me a video of him and was like, yeah, he's cute. You should text him. You DM slid him. in? I did. Damn. I never do that. Yes. I know. Love that. I know. What'd you say? Hey. <laughs> that, it works though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we had a conversation. Uh, yeah. Uh, it worked. Yeah. It's not over. Like, you're not like over the top. You're not. Like, it's just no, right... like no pickup lines. No. Cheesy. How long after you said, hey. Did you guys meet up in person? Um, a few months after that. Okay, so it took some time. Yeah. But, but you probably like maybe FaceTime. Yeah. yeah you get to know totally. each other. Totally. That's forming relationships off of Instagram, Dan. Have you done it before? Nope. Have you, you've <laughs> never made a friend that you've gone from just knowing over Instagram to real life? I don't think so. I'm about wow. to I'm about to meet my, my like third this weekend. Third? Yeah, my third wow. friend that I met only over Instagram. And we'll now meet in person. That's amazing. Yes. Is this a date? No, I don't think so. <laughs> well, to be you honest, the other so. one lives with me. Oh. oh, yeah. You know? That's cute. That's fine. I mean, meeting people over Instagram, that is, isn't that how it's done? Yeah. Yeah. 
And That's true. I mean, yeah. Every friend I've made has been like, hey, you're cool. Let's meet up. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, where, the fuck, where else am I meeting people? I'm not going to the library. It's true. I'm not going to the bar. Mm-mm. You know, I'm not talking to anybody at the grocery store. <laughs> God, fuck no. It's true. I'm going to the coffee shop. And I'm keeping my mouth shut. I'm talking to nobody <laughs> except for the person taking my order. <laughs> so the idea that I'm going to just meet somebody out there is just not a thing. Yeah, I get that. No, so you slide the fuck in. Yeah, where do you meet people? I don't meet anyone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that's the problem with me. Mm. I mean, no an problem, old, no old problem. Old sad man who sits home alone. A, a, with a girlfriend. Potentially. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah, well, Unconfirmed. W- one, Dan owns no furniture. He only owns <laughs> a bed and a red lawn chair. That's true. That's it. No TV, no lamp, no nothing. Is and this a new place? No, oh, no, I've been there for five oh, years. Okay. <laughs> I plan on moving in one day, but not there yet. Mm, gotcha. <laughs> I'm moving in one day. Let me ask you a question he's, about you. Wait, Enough about me. He's also 32 years old. Very I'm 44. old. 44. You're getting like. No, he's 32. He's, and he's getting shitted on this. I point. know. What the hell happened here? He's, Mackenzie, he's never been on a date before. You don't need to go on dates to. to and now he's, has, he has a girlfriend. You don't he shows to, up here the other day. You don't need to go on dates to do those things. In That's life. crazy. What? How the <laughs> fuck does that work? Let me ask you a question. Okay. Did you go on a first date? No. There you go. We yeah, did it. Yeah, but did you, have you gone on dates since? We, were, we lived in separate states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he like flew out. Yeah. He flew out for you. He did. It's adorable. Damn. Damn. <laughs> it's very cute. The things you do for love. Um, right? Well, you wrote a song about your dad that's unreleased. I did. What can we you know about that one? Um, Wait, sorry, that's... I'm still like laughing. Um, <laughs> Great transition there. Yeah, yeah. right? Really? So that bad. was very sandpaper <laughs> of you, Dan. <laughs> right. <Jesus>. Um, <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> so good. Yeah. Honestly, good to keep it lighthearted. It's like this, this, is all, it's, it's, this is literally all we do all day. Like, this is what we should be good at, you know? Not. I love it. Oh, oh, I love fuck. it. Um, yeah, I did. I wrote a song about my dad. I, My mom and my dad got divorced when I was like four. And so he's never really been around. So, got to write about that. What? That's wh- pent up emotion, or is there a moment that creeps back in that leads to that song? How do you even get to that place? Um, I actually like when I was younger. I never really thought about it in a bad way. I would make jokes and be like, "Yeah, I have daddy issues. Whatever. I don't have a dad. <laughs> like whatever." But, yeah. I think, but it was just a way to cope. Yeah. But I, I think the second I, like, turned 18, I was like, shit, like, this is actually a lot of built-up emotion that I never actually, like, talked about, explored. Like, I've just never thought about it. And um, so, I'm like, this is so deep from the last conversation we've had. But I, I started therapy, and my therapist was like, you need to write a letter to your dad. And I was like, I am not writing a letter to my dad like no so I just wrote a song and I was just planning on sending it to her and being like here's my letter to my dad but it turned out to be like my favorite song that I've done so that that's a big deal (laughs) for a bunch of different reasons because it's the best song you've ever done does it prove to you that you being your most vulnerable self actually works totally do you want your dad to hear it See, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. I'm like, I'm scared for my dad to hear it. But also, everyone's like, but it's how you're feeling and he should hear it eventually, you know? Because I feel like we've never actually had a conversation about how we how our relationship is and how he is as a dad to me. So I, ho- I hope he hears it. I In the beginning, I was like, I don't want him to and I won't release this and whatever. But I think it'll be really good. Because and a lot of people can also relate to it as well. Like I, a lot of my friends grew up without a dad and it's hard. When did he re-enter your life? Um, re-enter is a strong word. <laughs> I think like tries to, but fails. <laughs> did it happen when fame crept in or what was it? I honestly, I don't know. He just like, he'll talk to me and then not talk to me for a long time. And then he'll talk to me and then not talk to me for it. Like that's just how our relationship is that's kind of worse than just going silent no no it sucks but i have an amazing stepdad so it just makes up for all of it he is like my dad he's the best i prove like that proves to you so much more about what it means to be a father right absolutely that's really special nervous for your stepdad to hear the song no no he supports me with everything have you told anybody how you 
you, do you talk about it now that it's out in a song, written out? I feel like I, I don't talk about it, you know, on the internet or I don't talk no, about don't, it I mean, to my your friends. Mo- I mean, your or, mom? I mean, it's really hard to talk to my mom about it. Yeah. When I played her the song, it was like a full deal. She was bawling. Really? It was like a whole thing. Just because like, I mean, that was her husband as well. Like, that's hard. It is hard. Yeah. But I don't, growth is hard, man. Yeah, like, no, it is. Coming to terms with baggage that you've been hauling around for fucking far too long is hard. Yeah. But, like, going through and sorting through it, God, life gets brighter and lighter from that moment It does, on. yeah. Because, like, in the moment, the tears suck, and, like, it's hard to see. Yeah. And then to even have your song be the reason why your mom's... Like, the whole thing is, must be hard. Oh, it is so hard. My I played it for my sister as well, and she... I FaceTimed her and played it for her in the studio, and she couldn't talk she was not talking she was crying she was like i can't i can't do this right now and like hung up (laughs) but everyone loves it so it's great it's amazing do you guys do you and your sister share the way you saw the events growing up like do you do you see do you feel like you share that same reality because i grew up my parents got divorced it was really contentious for a long time and it started when i was like five or six and it lasted like eight years it was really intense and bad my sister and I have different versions of reality, but we share a lot of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think, like, honestly, my sister and I don't talk about it as much. Like, I think we'll be like, yeah, dad called me. And she'll be like, oh, okay. Like, why? Like, it's never, we never actually have, like, sat down and talked about it and been like, wow, that shit sucks. Like, we've, we went through that. Like, that's terrible. And he wasn't present for her either. No. Less for her, I think. Oh. How, like, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. When did your stepdad come into your life? Around when I was like seven or eight. That's a beautiful thing. And he's, he's like the best dad you'll ever meet. <laughs> I guess it's really special. Yeah. It's really, really special. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that yeah, in, in music and, and here on the couch. But like that is, that music like that has the ability to make a lot of people feel understood and less mm-hmm. alone. And I think art needs to be ripped from one's truest reality in order for it to really mm-hmm. spark change uh, yeah. for somebody else. So thank you for doing that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, it means a lot. Um, nobody also talks about divorce situations as much. And like, it's true. Separated families are really rough and it's, you know, God. And like, by the way, like that's in, in people, I talk to young people who are like, you know, I love this person in the moment. We must have a child. Uh, like, <laughs> divorce is really intense for people. Yeah. You know, and it's really hard. And uh, it's, it, it definitely goes uh, underplayed because the reality of the situation is, like, separating families just fucking challenging. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, of course. You're really special. Um, thank you. Do you have a name for your album? Do you have, like, an idea of what you want to <laughs> like, call it? Can I even say anything? Oh, you do have one. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I have a name. <laughs> I have a name. Can't tell you. Is the song about your dad going to be on the album? Maybe. Is the song about your dad going to be released before the album yes. comes? Yes. Cool. I think it deserves its own totally thing. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Damn. Do you... I Have you listened to it recently? I listened to it today, actually. I got the full mix back, so... It was, it was nice to hear. What do you think? I love it. It was right? Yeah. I, it's actually the one song that I can listen to a lot and not get tired of it, which I think is very special. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that it's not hard to listen to. Right. I think, I don't want to be that guy, but this could be a sign of growth. This could be a <laughs> sign of closing out one chapter and saying, fuck you and moving on. Totally. I think so too, yeah. Pretty fucking cool. Thanks. <laughs> What are you thinking, Daniel? I'm not good at transitions, so you <laughs> take this one. <laughs> what, is, what is it? No, I'm just saying, like, whatever I say, we have probably have nothing to do with that. <laughs> okay, so just say it. I just want to know if there's anything from your past you're embarrassed of and like wish it could be wiped off the internet. Oh, absolutely all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's restart from like a week ago. <laughs> I'm like, absolutely all of it. Um, no, I mean, I've, I've been, I've done so much embarrassing shit in my life and it's because I started when I was six. So like, yeah. I can find the worst videos of myself and it's terrible, 
But also I'm like, it's funny. And like, I look back at it and I think it's hilarious. But like, I did a Fortnite dance on like a talk show. And I'm like, that needs to be erased <laughs> from eternity. But it will live that on. one up. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Please. <laughs> not nice, Daniel. Not are you gonna, nice. Are you, whenever this album is done, are we going to take it on the road? Have a tour? I hope so. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Okay. Yeah, that's how it works, right? I think so. Most times, hopefully. <laughs> fingers and toes. Fingers fingers and toes crossed. Yes. Um, what do you think if you take it on the road? Have a little Mac Z moment. Oh, Mac Z. Isn't that, isn't that you back in the day like it's a girl yeah. party? Never in no, a million all years. Right. All right. Just, just had to ask. People have been asking me. They're like, can you please do like a cover of Girl Party? And I'm like, yeah, over my dead body. That was like your <laughs> first single, right? First single. Yeah. Classic. Mm -hmm. And maybe fun. Maybe in like 10 years when it's like really fun. Yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to be that guy, but like I don't think it was that big to begin with. So like why are we going to go back and retool right. old shit just to make ourselves feel... Uh, <laughs> Embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. No offense. Like, if it was like, you know, no, skyrocketing I mean, hey. up the Hot 100, I'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, bring that shit back. Breathe new light, life into her. No, but it was like a Nickelodeon thing, right? It wasn't Nickelodeon, oh. but it was just part of the show. Got it. Got it. But girls, that, can, that can stay. Girls party, RIP. Girl, girls party. Girl party. Oh, girls girl, party? Girl, girl party. party. Girl party. Thank you. Rip. Of course. Sorry. Bad idea. All right. Yeah. Pitch a better idea. What else you got? Nothing. You take it. No. <laughs> You can listen to all of Kenzie's music, by the way, on Amazon Music. You should. Her entire discography is there. Uh, I don't know if Girl Party is there. I don't think so. Hopefully it's not. Definitely not. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> this album, though, you have a name. You won't share the name. Do you have an ideal release date? Um, Not later in the year. Later in the year. What was the first song made for this album? The title of the song. Oh, uh, we don't have that yet. <laughs> we don't have that. Damn. What was the last song made for the album? Honestly, it could be one of the songs I did this week, last week, the oh, week Oh, you're before. still, like, going. Yeah. I'm, I have a session right after this. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are you feeling inspired to write some songs from this interview? Absolutely. Cool. I'm just going to write embarrassing <laughs> shit about you. So. Yeah, write Joking. a song about a sad 32-year-old who's never been on a date, but yet magically has a girlfriend? I don't, how the fuck does that and work? And sits in a red lawn chair. Yes. Like a grumpy old I'm man. I'm not making fun Maybe of you. Maybe you'd be happier if you lived that life. Maybe no. you... <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't. No, no. I'm a very materialistic person. Really? I never would have yeah. thought that. No, that's <laughs> why. He's getting I mean, worse as he gets older. Yeah. It's <laughs> getting bad. No, I think I'm just getting more depressed, so I just spend oh, money. Oh, God. <laughs> that definitely cures it. No, that's... Well, that's, you know, that's the fucking vicious cycle I'm in. Because, you know, you get sad, and you're like, oh, I gotta go spend money to heal myself. Um, so you think money buys you happiness? Uh, I'm in the process of figuring it out. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the answer is definitely not, but yet I still find myself spending money. Gotcha. I mean... What, yeah. Do you know what happiness is? I mean, yeah. I mean, just being around people that I love. That's That's nice. like my happiness. <laughs> that's nice happiness is a forever thing though like it's it's always changing the definition is living and breathing and yeah. evolving so fuck <laughs> and yeah i know that like you know buying things to, when you're sad you shouldn't buy things <laughs> i bought a dog once and it was like it's still around <laughs> it's been the worst fucking mistake i made oh stop no i have no. two dogs the one dog fights with the other one if anybody yeah. in the room wants a french bulldog you interested I'll think about it sis you have a dog what you want? Not that. No, don't bring. I don't think my dog would like another dog. No, probably not. Is it an older dog? No, but she's a rescue. She oh, is crazy! Wow, she has issues. Don't we all? We all do. You That's write, why I love her. Are you gonna write about your issues? I mean, maybe about my dog's issues. Mm. <laughs> has going to therapy made you a better songwriter? Yes, I actually think so. I think I'm like more open to like talk about myself in front of strangers. That was like weird for me in the beginning. I was like, I'm not going to open up to this like 30 year old man about my love life. Like it just feels weird. Because <laughs> it is. It is weird. But it also isn't at the same time. Yeah. Because it's like what you do. Yes. I don't know. But now I'm like, it's fine. Do you go like, are you like a weekly person? You going still? To therapy? Yeah. I think I've like, I haven't gone as much just because I'm so busy. Yeah, and, I get it. But. But also music like does help. I know like it that's does. so cliche to say. No, genuinely, like writing sessions, I feel like are my therapy in a way because I just talk. Yeah, that's kind of what therapy is, right? Is that's you share your therapy. side of the story. Exactly. It's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Damn, I look forward to the album. <laughs> Thank you.
What are you thinking, Daniel? Are you, do you have ideas that you're going to the studio now? Is it to work on songs you've already written or is it new songs? Um, Blank Slate. Blank mm. New Slate. new song today. Damn. Exciting. So Fresh fun. canvas. It's the most fun, Just, I think. Is it? Yeah. But you have you you have no inspiration or no lines or anything. Like I mean, stories? I have like a note on my phone. Oh, you have like, something. Yeah, I always have something. Yeah. But you go in blank, and then if the room is offering nothing, do you whip out your inspiration? Yeah, like sometimes sometimes it's just like us talking, and they're like, "Oh, I have a great idea, by the way," and I'm like, "That's cool." How do you know when a song is finished? <sighs> when I guess when all the words are done. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's like I guess when that's we the wrote the, my when we wrote the song. <laughs> that was the best answer I ever that is, it. That was phenomenal. Wait, we should that's really great. <laughs> that was so good. Listen to Kenzie's full discography of yeah. song music. That was uh, that's you're amazing. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being honest. Thanks and for having me. That, I, really watching you evolve, especially as a musician, has been really fucking cool. And uh the music videos are cool as shit too. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. The work involved in that is laborious and intense, yes? Yes, for sure. But it's, it has to be gratifying. Oh, I feel I feel so happy. What yeah. is that process like? Do you are you involved from the very beginning? Yes. I'm involved in everything. We do choreography or do you bring somebody in to do that? I don't dance as much mm. on in music videos. Is that strategic? I just like to separate the two. Really? I just feel like it makes me more of like a I, like I feel like I need dance to back me up. You don't. Which I just don't. I just don't like to separate. You know, I like to have time to dance and time to sing. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> Thank you. That's really. I mean, that's was was that hard to convince your team of, or were they? Um, I, I mean, mean, I think since then I got a full new team. <laughs> I just signed see. with a new label. So Mazel it's, tov. Thank you. So it's been. I mean, they they've been amazing. They are great. They are great. That's fucking awesome. So really the creative power is on, it's in your yeah. hands. It's it also, feels good. Also a little scary. Yes and no. I mean, I like to have a voice. You deserve it. It's you. Th yeah, totally. <laughs> everything you do and everything you make is an extension of your being. Yeah. It should be your voice. Of course. And then everybody else chiming in. Mm -hmm. But you make the decision. Boss. <laughs> yeah. Mike <Mike's> job. <laughs> Kenzie, appreciate you. Thank you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for putting up with us. Thanks for having me. No, I love hanging with you guys. Oh, album time, come back, please. Will do. Final thoughts? No. Okay. <laughs> Listen to Kenzie's music on Amazon Music, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Kenzie, everybody. <laughs> oh, my God.